it went very, very well. Uh, what was your total time, Don? Gee, I'd have to look at the log sheet, Dallas. I don't know, but I, I feel we're about five or six minutes ahead of our uh, schedule. It just, uh, it just couldn't have gone uh, more smoothly. Chief Rob, or Chief uh, Wood here did a magnificent job, and Chief Rob Ned, who is still locked up in the airplane, yeah. also did well. Chief Wood, uh, did you have a chance to say anything to the astronauts? Did, you, did they say anything to you? No, sir. With the uh, bigs on, they, they, they couldn't have heard me, and with the headset we were had on, I couldn't hear anything they said. They, their actions indicated they were uh, cheerful uh, all the way through the entire procedure. Was there any sort of message that they conveyed in some way or other to you? No, sir. We didn't. We didn't really have time. We were too busy trying to get our gear together to uh, get back on board. Yeah. Uh, Lieutenant Johnson, uh, you probably got a look at them. Uh, you were flying co-pilot. Yes, I was. Uh, I looked back as we got out of the helicopter, and one of them gave me a thumbs up. And that's the only signal I got from them. They sure looked cheerful, though. Glad to get back. Boy, it's a big thrill for me to pick them up too. Was there any complication at any point, Don? None whatsoever, Dallas. Uh, it just went uh, just re very, very smoothly. Uh, better than the Simex we had two days ago. So I was well, it could hardly go any better than that. No, it couldn't. Could it? No, I was very pleased. Uh, exactly according to plan. And, uh, of course, it's a great sense of relief to us to know that it was done and done well. So, satisfied. Well, you've now uh, performed your second uh, manned spacecraft recovery. This, uh, is the, this is the third one for HS4. As you know, Chuck Smiley uh, had the last right. one on 10, and we had eight. But you yourself. So it, it's a big accomplishment for the squadron, and uh, we're all real proud of it. What do you think will happen to uh, helicopter number 66 now? Will it put, uh, be put in some special place? Well, as I told you, uh, my junior officer suggested it be bronzed and put in the Smithsonian. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I don't think so. It's still a real good flying machine, and we'll get a lot of use out of it. I suspect it still has a good many flying hours ahead of it. Sure does. Sure does. Well, Don, congratulations well, again. Thank Lieutenant you very much, Johnson, Chief Wood. Thank you very much. And congratulations thank also to Chief much. Rob Nett. Thank you. Chief Rob Nett is still inside the uh, helicopter, which uh, very soon now will be moved back up to the flight deck and uh, will be moved back toward the fantail and then will be uh, sealed after Chief Rob Nett is out of it and will be pumped full of formaldehyde gas and uh, left to sit there for a couple of hours as a, an additional measure against possible decontamination. Hornet plus three. The slogan of this carrier throughout the Apollo 11 cruise the slogan has now been fulfilled. Horgan, the Hornet has fulfilled its mission, and it has picked up three additional men. So it's Hornet plus three. Now down there below the window, very shortly now, uh, will be affixed the presidential seal uh, in advance of President Nixon's arrival. Those two uh, significant uh, signs will, in essence, uh, sum up the, uh, this mission in its very briefest form. Hornet plus three. Hornet has recovered the three astronauts back from the moon, and President Nixon signaling the importance of this great moment in the history of man's space flight will be uh, coming down to uh, congratulate the astronauts in person. Dallas, the Hornet started out with 2,222 people on board. And now the three more. Actually, it has a good many more than that at the moment, but uh, some of them, in fact, all of the uh, new arrivals will be leaving shortly. you to know that I think I'm the luckiest man in the world. And I say this not only because I have the honor to be President of the United States, but particularly because I 
have the privilege of uh, speaking for so many and welcoming you back to Earth. Uh, I could tell you about all the messages we've received in Washington. Over 100 foreign governments, emperors and presidents and prime ministers and kings have sent the most warm messages that we've ever received. They represent over 2 billion people on this earth, all of them who have had the opportunity through television to see what you have done. And then I also bring you messages from members of the cabinet and members of the Senate and members of the House and the Space Agency, from the streets of San Francisco where people stopped me a few days ago and you all love that city, I know as I do. But most important, I had a telephone call yesterday. The toll wasn't incidentally as great as the one I made to you fellows on the moon. <laughs> I made that collect, incidentally, in case you didn't know. <laughs> but I called uh, three of, in my view, three of the greatest ladies and most courageous ladies in the whole world today, your wives. And from Jan and Joan and Pat, I bring their love and their congratulations. We think it's just wonderful that they couldn't have participated, at least through television, in this return. We're only sorry they couldn't be here. And also, I've got to let you in a little secret. I made a date with them. <laughs> uh, I invited them to dinner on, on the 13th of uh, August, right after you come out of quarantine. It will be a state dinner held in Los Angeles. The governors of all the 50 states will be there, the ambassadors, others from around the world and in America. And uh, they told me that you would come too. And all I want to know, will you come? We want to honor you then. <laughs> well, do anything you say, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> anytime. Uh, one question I think that uh, all of us would like to ask, uh, uh, as we saw you bouncing around in that the boat out there, I wonder if that wasn't the hardest part of the journey. Was that the only, did, did any of you get seasick? No, we didn't, and it, it was uh, one of the harder parts, but it was one of the most pleasant, we can assure you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just know that uh, uh, you can sense what we all sense. When you get back now, it's, uh, have you been able to follow some of the things that happened when you've gone? Did you know about the All-Star game? Yes, sir. The, uh, the Council Communicators have been giving us uh, daily news reports. Yeah. Yeah. Were you American League or National League? I'm a National League man. National not League. Sir. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> There's the politician in the group, <laughs> right? <laughs> but yeah, you missed that game. Yeah. Well, oh, you knew that too. You really yeah. heard that, uh, yeah, the rain. The rain. Right. Well, we haven't learned to control the weather yet, but that's something we can look forward to tomorrow's job. Right. Right. Well, I could I could summarize it because I don't want to hold you now. You have so much more to do. And gee, you look great. You feel as good as oh, you feel you're great. Feel just perfect, Mr. Yeah. President. Yeah. Are you? I understand you. Frank Borman says you're a little younger by reason of having going into space. Is that right? Do you feel that way? A little younger? Well, a lot younger than Frank Borman. <laughs> <laughs> there he is over there. <laughs> Come on over, Frank, so they can see you. And. You gonna take that line down? Or they, uh, <laughs> it looks like he has aged in the last yeah. couple of weeks. Come on, Frank. Frank. Mr. President, the one thing I want to, you know, we have a, a poet in Mike Collins, and he really gave me a hard time for describing the words of fantastic and beautiful. And you were, I counted them. In three minutes up there, you used four fantastics and two beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, just let me close off with this one thing. I, I was thinking, as, as, as you know, as you came down, and we know it was a success. And it had only been eight days, just, just a week, a long week. But this is the greatest week in the history of the world since the creation. Because as a result of what happened in this week, the world is bigger, infinitely. And also, as I'm going to find on this trip around the world, and as Secretary Rogers will find that he covers the other countries in Asia, as a result of what you've done, the world's never been closer together before. And we just thank you for that. And I only hope that all of us in government, all of us in America, uh, that as a result of what you've done, we can do our job a little better. We can reach for the stars just as you have reached so far from the stars. We don't want to hold you any longer. Anybody have a, a last word? How about promotions? Do you think we could arrange something? <laughs> uh, 
I was just pleased to be back and very honored that you uh, were so kind as to come out here and uh, welcome us back. Yeah. And uh, we look look forward to getting out of this quarantine and, and uh, right. talking without having glass right. between us. Right. And uh, incidentally, the, the speeches that you have to make at this dinner can be very short. And if you want to say fantastic or beautiful, that's all right with us. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to think of new, any new adjectives. They've all been said. And now I think, incidentally, that uh, all of us uh, who, the millions that are seeing us on television now, seeing you, uh, would, would feel as I do that, in a sense, our prayers have been answered. And I think it would be very appropriate if Chaplain Pierto, the chaplain of this ship, were to offer a prayer of Thanksgiving.